Today it's all about universe mode, how to set it up and make it modern just like WWE programming on TV right now. We're going to go through a 2024 setup for you. Beginning to end, every detail you need to know. One of the first things I want you to do though, once like you've set up your universe and all of that, you can do this at the beginning, but set this thing up and hit copy. And then I want you to copy it to an empty slot that you have available so that you don't lose anything. Once we're all done, copy this over your whole template and use it just like that. One that you can play with all the time and mess around with. And then you have another slot saved just in case you want to go in and tweak and change it. And it's kind of like your preset template for universe. Let's start by looking at our calendar. So we're keeping everything for 2024 raw NXT SmackDown, all of the PLEs as well. We have kept them all as they are. Uh, for this standard template and build. The only thing that I did was I just changed WrestleMania uh, to the other week in Sunday. Now, when we look at all of our PLEs, every single one, well, not every one, but most of them have a different theme to them. And you could just leave this as default for the match table and how they're organized and the percentage of certain things, likewise with the shows. But when it comes to the PLEs, if we go into edit backlash as an example, you could set the number of matches however you like. I'd stick with like nine because it depends because WWE now is like we're going to do five matches on the card. But because we want to be able to host both shows, nine is a good number so we can get all of our rivalries in there. When it comes to the match table, I have it set as custom. So what you can see here is what I have going on for Backlash specifically. One-on-one -on -one match, we have 9% chance that we're going to get that. It's unlimited, and we're going to have a championship match for that. I also put in that we are going to get one ambulance match at Backlash, and I just up the chances for that. Limited to one. Six superstar tag team match. We got one of those. Tag team matches, we can have up to three, but we want the titles on the line. And a one-on-one -on -one no holds barred match for the championship. This is what I like about using match tables because in leading up to every single pay-per-view, every single show, you're going to be able to meticulously go in and adapt and change how all the PLEs will look to you. And so that they have their own individual feel instead of just kind of go in the default with what the AI will produce because it's not always accurate. Money in the Bank is another one. We have 10 matches here. The match table, I have left this pretty much the same. We've got a limit of four one-on-one -on -one matches with championships on the line. Tag matches, we're only going to have two because we want to have tag team championships and maybe the women's tag team championships will go on the line. And the ladder matches, we want to make sure that we are going to get these ladder matches and we limit it to two with championships or money in the bank at SummerSlam, i went in and i just changed this to have a normal matches we got four two tag matches a fatal four-way ladder match i want to happen at SummerSlam, and i put in a one-on-one -on -one special guest referee it's going to be the main event for the championship so this is again what i'm talking about you can go in and kind of be your own general manager if you want to do that so what i like about match tables and crafting them because I always like organizing universe mode, sometimes more than playing through universe mode. But I like doing this because once I get to SummerSlam, I'm already kind of building it out like I'm Triple H. And I've already got my match card set up months in advance. And I know that at SummerSlam main event, it should, if it all, if it doesn't glitch, it should all work out where I'm going to get a special guest referee match in the main event. Payback I didn't touch. Fast lane I didn't touch. War games, I just made sure that we were going to have two war games and they're going to be for the main event. The Royal Rumble, same thing. I made sure that we got the championship matches and that we have two Royal Rumble matches going on. Elimination Chamber, I customized it as well. We have two Elimination Chamber set, main event for the titles. So we are going to have title matches at Chamber this year. And then WrestleMania. Go and have a lot of fun, however you want your Mania card. But once again, setting this up in advance makes it pretty enjoyable. So... We're going to end up having a one-on-one -on -one Hell in a Cell match that's going to be in there for a championship. We're going to have just the normal matches, only two of them in the main event for the titles. Tag team title match. Special guest referee we're going to have on the card. We're going to have an eight-way, so a fatal four-way tornado tag team match for the tag team titles. And then we're going to have a casket match put on the card and a no-holds-barred. We could just add even more if we wanted to. Now, the last thing I will say with match tables... We have the rivalry ones and we have the two on two rivalries. So what you can do is for any of the rivalries running during this period, you can meticulously go in there and adapt these how you like. If you want to be able to have rivalries 
that are going to have certain stipulation all the time. I don't tend to do this. I don't go in and change the rivalry match tables because I'm usually doing free mode that we'll talk about where I'm going to go in and just change up the stipulations anyway. So I don't need them to be certain matches when we're going to have like the rivalries going on. So that is everything for your calendar. NXT, do as you wish. I haven't gone through and customized NXT just yet, but we need to go in there and we need to do things like check out our roster and editing our shows. So we look at Monday Night Raw and we're going to talk about the rosters, how we set these up, the divisions, the teams, everything you need to know. There's a couple of things you can do when it comes to your roster. And I'll back up just for a second here. One thing we can do is under edit shows. When it is at default and you go to participants, you could go and deselect everybody. If you want to kind of start over, sometimes what I do is I will go in and unselect everyone from Raw and SmackDown and NXT because some people have graduated up to main roster. And then I will go in and match it all. So what I've done here for this season of Universe Mode is I have matched everything for what we get for WWE TV as best we can because some members of the roster are not available yet. So when we go to show details for Monday Night Raw, uh, one of the patch updates that we got recently depends on when you watch this, but one of the patch updates we did get is that the referees do stick. So when you do select John Cohn as an example, or Charles Robinson, who's going to be my referee for Monday Night Raw, it stays. Uh, it was glitching before for some people where they said that for 2K24, the referee would not stay on the brand and it would go back to the default. That seems to be fixed now, but it, it may not. It, it may still be broken. So for participants, I don't need to go through every single person with you, but as you see here, as I go through the roster, I have matched up everybody from WWE.com's roster page for all the roster members, who is on Monday Night Raw, and who is going to be on SmackDown as well. There are some people that are simply DLC. They're not available yet. I don't have the cause downloaded for them, but going with the straight up roster that we have available, Monday Night Raw is completely set up. So one thing to do, go to WWE.com and look at their roster pages so you know exactly who you need to put on which brand, and then you'll be all set. Same with the championships. Uh, we've matched everybody who is going to be our champions. So across the board, across all the brands, yes, we have... Channing is going to be our NXT Tag Team Champion, as he is with Tony D'Angelo. We've got every current Tag Team Champions with the Bloodline. With We do have the Tag Team Champions, Damian Priest, Finn Balor. They're running both belts. Gunther. We've got Ken Carter, Katana Chance, Io Sky, Ilya Dragunov, Paul. we got Rhea Ripley, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins. They're all there matched up as proper champions with their belts. Now, match table. I have tweaked this just slightly. I cleared it out because match table for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown by default, it gives you like a bunch of different things thrown in there. So go through and just erase this, vacate the rules if you want to. And then I just change it so that on Raw, it's going to be a limit of three one-on-one -on -one matches, two tag team matches. And then you can have fun though. If you're going to put this in and you're like, oh, I always want to have a fatal four-way match on Monday Night Raw. And I always want it to be a battle royal. We're going to have this 100% of the time and I'm going to limit it to one and I'm always going to have that match special guest referee you want to do that too you can always have those things kind of as default uh, to be on your card I don't always like doing this because I mean you can get bored and then you could just change it every month if you want to do that maybe you have kind of a running theme going on for every single week you could do it that way championships money in the bank as we've discussed we got Seth Rollins and I'll go through the division in a second you got Gunther the tag champions we got Judgment Day we got Rhea Ripley and we got Kaden Carter, Katana Chance, and Senior Money in the Bank, Damian Priest. Now, Money in the Bank is a tricky one because it's still kind of glitching out where Money in the Bank cash-ins are not always working. So depending on when you're watching this, they may have patched it and fixed it, or it's still acting a little wonky. Okay, looking at the divisions now for Monday Night Raw. These I have gone through and I have scrubbed for individual contenders. They're running through the divisions, the tag team divisions, and then I'll go and show you a little bit of the roster breakdown too for all the teams we created. So on Raw, there's really, I mean, they fluctuate who they want to slot in there for the main event scene. Right now, I just got it as Shinsuke, and Drew is number one contender to go up against Seth Rollins. Uh, when we go over to slot two, and we have the IC title division, you got Miz. Again, Miz and R-Truth, they're probably going to end up in the tag team division. So what I'll do is I'll just put them in there right now because right now they are in the tournament and maybe they'll win at WrestleMania. We don't know. So we got Dirty Dom, Bronson Reed, Ricochet, Apollo Crews, 
who you could release and put them as in the other category same as like gender because and dextra loomis because they don't come on raw very often so what i end up doing sometimes is i will go in here and i will select certain people and i'll kind of release them uh, and that way they're not going to interact with that division so i'm going to take those guys out and hit save and if i go to other you can see who's kind of in the other category cody is in the other category why because he floats on raw and smackdown and and currently in storyline for wwe he's fighting the bloodline so he can have matches on raw but he's going after roman reigns for that belt because that, that's that's what we're doing here this year so we've got our icy title division it's fine for the most part. Sami Zayn is in there, and we know that right now, anyways, Sami Zayn is moving up in the tournament, and he's actually going to be the number one contender. So we got to slap Sami Zayn as our number one contender in there. The tag team divisions, we have built this out. So we got the Creed Brothers, they are drafted up to Monday Night Raw. We have that. You've got Imperium in there, Gargano, Champa, The New Day, Chad Gable, and Otis, Eric and Ivar. Eric is injured, so you could remove him right now if you don't want to do that. Inda Sheer is in there, and Awesome Truth. The Women's World Championship division here, you guys can see and go through all of this, but you can see how we have this set up right now. Every single person, basically it's all singles competitors that are running in the women's division. Now, if we are going to get this set up so it's accurate, fully accurate right now with WWE, we're going to move Becky Lynch to number one contender because that's where she is right now. And then when other people come out like Nia Jax, we can update it then too. Our tag team division, we're running these titles. We got Chelsea Green, Piper Niven, Shayna Baszler, and Zoe Stark are also scheduled as a tag team. It's a little thin on the tag team division side for the women, but it's okay. WWE team seems to play with these quite a bit. And then that's it. So then we save it and we're good you can edit the power rankings if you guys want see who are your top top people that are running your shows i don't really touch these quite honestly like i i really don't um i don't know really what impact somebody probably does know but i don't really know what the power rankings really are going to do i mean they're going to say what their star level is going to be so better star ratings for their matches but it doesn't really matter to me that much nxt just going through so you guys can see the roster itself everybody that is on nxt currently is on my nxt roster and by default it does include people like braun braun breaker the creed brothers and so on and i have moved them around because they are on main roster right now so we've cleaned this up and everybody that is on it current nxt television they're added to our roster We've got the matches set for five when it comes to NXT. The match table, I haven't touched. I've left it as default. I don't personally go through and play a ton of NXT in my universe mode. I'm more so just like setting it up and playing Raw and SmackDown, simulating a bunch of things. So let's look at SmackDown. And once again, I don't need to go through all the participants here, but we have set it up so that we have modernized the entire roster for everyone that is on SmackDown on TV currently, including Cody Rhodes added to the roster so everything makes sense and grayson waller is there we got everybody umberto is on the roster so everyone is added in and it makes total sense now what about Ke kevin owens why is kevin owens not there hold on here we got kevin owens we got to get kevin owens actually added on there looks like i actually missed somebody so we'll add kevin owens and make sure that he is actually on smackdown that'll make sense all right and then number of matches we got nine and the match table itself I've cleaned this up, but the only thing I was kind of messing around with is I added one special guest referee match, and we might get one of those once a week on SmackDown just to spice it up a little bit, but a limit of three matches, two tags, and a special guest referee match on SmackDown. The other thing you can do with SmackDown, though, is lower the number of matches, because SmackDown is technically a two-hour show, so it doesn't really go as long as WWE Raw. So if you want to, we might actually put this down to, like, six matches. That way, we cover all of our rivalries, and you can add in a few extra matches along the way. The other thing we'll look at is our championships. Haven't really touched this, didn't need to, but we got Roman Reigns. We've got Logan Paul as our U.S. champion. We've got Judgment Day running those tag titles. Yo Sky currently our women's champion and the tag team champions. No, we don't have any other Money in the Bank title holders right now, but that's okay because we can always add that in later. When it comes to the divisions, we've got Roman Reigns, the Undisputed Champion. We've got The Rock as the number one contender, and I made sure Rock in his settings, he is set up as a heel. We got Randy Orton running around in the main division, but Randy's going off and he's fighting Logan Paul 
US title right now. So Randy's Randy's kind of like all over the place for me. Like I could put Randy here and I could put him in the US title because I guess I guess I gotta put Randy in the US title, don't I? So we're gonna we're gonna edit this division. It looks pretty thin, doesn't it? It's pretty darn thin. So we'll go in here, we'll edit the division for one second, and we'll add Randy Orton in there. So Heavyweight is the same problem on Raw and SmackDown. There's nobody in the main title picture. We got Cody and The Rock. That's it. Then we've got over in the US title division. We do have quite a bit going on in here because a lot of these guys do float in and out. But as an example, Sheamus, I'm going to actually release into the other category because Sheamus is not just not on TV or he's injured, but I think he's just not on TV. But everybody else uh, is going to be staying the same. So, and then we'll edit the rankings here and we're going to swap Randy Orton who's going to go all the way up there and then your boy LA Knight yeah dummy he's going up in there too and boom we got a really healthy US title division here that's going to make sense then we can go in here to our tags and Judgment Day is obviously running on both shows and we have made sure that we've got all of the tag teams in here including Pete Dunne, Tyler Bate, New Catch Republic they're in there Austin Theory and Grayson Waller are our team the women's divisions Everything in here is modern and makes sense, but let's edit the rankings here and we'll put Bailey as number one. And then we've got a really healthy women's division. But once again, if we take Charlotte out of here, she is branded and drafted to SmackDown, but she's currently on the injured list. So we got rid of her. Scarlett as well, because Scarlett doesn't wrestle and I wish she would because Scarlett is awesome. But we're going to remove Scarlett too. So now everything is kind of current set makes sense yes Asuka is in here and she's part of the Kabuki Warriors but the Kabuki War we don't have Kyrie Sane yet she's DLC so when Kyrie Sane comes out then we can do this again and if you guys want to do this again another time we can totally do that too the tag team division on Smackdown for the women because they're floating both brands it's very thin so we have Alba Fire and Isla Dawn they are the other contenders for the tag titles and then you can see what we have here in our other category but everyone is in the right divisions now the other one oh yeah there's Kevin Owens so hang on here we're going to go in to edit division and we got to find ourselves Kevin Owens. There's KO. All right, we got him. So then we're going to take Kevin Owens, who is right there. And then we're going to edit the rankings and we're going to slap him right in there. There. Now we got Kevin Owens in the proper division. And just to show you one more time, that's what we have for our roster for the other category, because Jimmy's going to go and fight Jay at WrestleMania. Solo's always around, and he's just kind of a manager most of the time. And the other people don't wrestle a ton. Dakota Kai does. She could go in the women's division, but she's kind of mixing up with the tags. So that's how I have things slotted, and then my shows will make sense. And they're all in an orderly fashion. Okay, before we go into the show itself, let's dig into our universe. So I'm going to start off with options because we've seen the settings here. We're doing classic mode. Automatic rivalries are off so I can control everything. Tag team breakups. I don't want the AI to touch my tag teams. The crowd reaction changing. I don't mind this. If they want to boo and they want to yell, then we'll leave the crowd reactions on. <laughs> injuries. We can leave injuries on so we can actually have some cool moments in here. The entrances are on. AI cash-ins I've completely turned off, except for a post-match cash-in, because then technically the AI could lose. I put that at 2%. Um, this one, or 20%, the cash-ins, I always turn them off because if they're at 50% by default, you are running the risk that the AI will just do a cash-in, especially when you simulate a lot of weeks. So keep that at zero if you don't want to run into that. You can also just announce a cash-in and do it that way. What I'm finding in universe mode right now in its current state is that there are quite a few bugs and that cash-ins just are not working mid-match cash-ins do not work uh, universe tutorials I keep off and that's that for that so then we go over to tag teams here's what I want to show you guys for how I've set this up I've gone through and created some of these teams and some of them we just kept as generic teams and I haven't really changed a whole heck of a lot DIY we got Alba Fire Isla Dawn Alpha Academy is in there of course I created Awesome Truth because they are a brand new tag team the Bloodline we haven't touched they're in there Biggs and Briggs and Jensen chase you Creed Brothers are in there, but they're on Raw, of course. Uh, then we move down. We got Damage Control is updated properly now. We're just missing Kyrie Singh. Gallus Rod Touching Imperium's good. Into Sheer. Judgment Day is fully loaded in there, too. Getting Carnage Katana Chance. Latino World Order, the LWO. Uh, we made Legato Del Fantasma, so they are back as a full group. Unfortunately, he's got the LWO, so we got to get a new, new Legato updated look here uh, for our boy. 
Now we got New Catch Republic in there too. Their setup is a brand new team. The New Day are working. Big E is on, is not assigned. I don't think I have him assigned to anybody because we don't want him coming out because he's injured. The OC is in there. Piper Niven, Chelsea Green, pretty deadly. Shayna and, I said Shane. <laughs> it's Shayna and Zoe. Matt can't spell. That's okay. Because he's just a big old dummy. There we go. So we got Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. Street Profits, but we've added Bobby Lashley in there too as part of the team. And Waller, in theory, are the new teams. So that's everything. And then you got a mixed gender. You got Karrion Cross and Scarlet, of course. And that's it for the teams. So the roster, when you're going through everything in the roster, you guys can go really, really deep in this if you want to. And sometimes I do because I want to keep it kind of current with WWE TV. Uh, so if you go into like AJ Styles, it says he's currently in a rivalry. So be careful because if I mess with him, then it's going to mess it all up. But just making sure that he is a heel right now. And then I can change like who his allies are and who he's feuding with. But I already got him in a feud, I think, with LA Knight. So we're keeping that pretty accurate. For rivalries. Now they're doing this before WrestleMania. So you do your rivalries how you like. I like to set up all my rivalries at the beginning. Uh, table set everything so it's all the way I want to. And I tend to use free mode when it comes to the rivalry actions so that I just fully control it. Now, we'll talk about rivalry actions in a minute what they can do, which ones to select, and also what level your feud should be at because that will impact how these rivalries will go. So we've got Sammy versus Gunther, Becky versus Rhea, Seth and Drew, and then the tag team titles are there because I'm kind of assuming it's going to be awesome truth. I'm going to win that tag team ladder match. We've got NXT set up here, so we're keeping it as accurate as we possibly can with NXT. It's a smaller roster. And then we've got Friday Night SmackDown, once again, trying to keep it as accurate as we can. I wish we had more slots when it came to rivalries, um, but that's how we have it set up right now. And then we can manually go in and we can add in our tag teams. Now, when we go into our show, so we can see I got our match lineup here in our card. This is where like sometimes you're going to want to go into each individual roster member and check who their managers are and check who's coming out because sometimes it glitches and you're like, oh, that person doesn't come here. Like The Miz and Maurice. Like I had to get rid of Maurice because she's not on TV, but she would be out there by default. So I think I have scrubbed through all of this. I set this up a little while ago, but we've got our tag team matches and our rivalries are set up. So they are the matches for the most part. They're going to make sense based on the divisions and what you set up. But see, I got Big E out there, so I got to go in and remove Big E from managing them uh, so that it will make a little bit more sense. But the rivalries, for the most part, like I got JD and Jinder Mahal main eventing Monday Night Raw. That, that doesn't make sense, does it? No, don't like that at all. Uh, but we can start our show there, and then I'll just simulate actually to go over to SmackDown so I can show you guys how SmackDown is looking. But I would recommend going through and trying to remove some people that are managers so that it does look a little more accurate for you. So we do have AJ, and we'll talk about rivalry actions in just a second. Got our first week here, see? It's looking good, except for this. See? The universe mode is still bugging on me. So we've got... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you got a little problem here when it comes to uh, the participants of this match here. So we don't need Santos. So that means I need to go in here and I need to actually get rid of Santos because um, he's managing the roster. So what we can do is back out and we will go to roster and we'll go to superstars and we'll go to Santos Escobar. Let's see here. Uh, they're not under teams. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Santos Escobar. So what's probably going on is that I haven't updated them enough. See, we can see we got all these managers. I don't want them as the managers. So we'll see if that fixes it. Let's save all the settings to all of our universes and our roster play. And then back out. And we'll see if it updated. So it's going to have to go through another week and remove them. But we're going to have to go to Cruz del Toro and Joaquin Wild and make sure that we delete them there so if i can go through and we'll remove ah, managers king wild and centos escobar and we'll save all these settings and let's see it's probably gonna need yeah it's gonna need next week anyways 
So all of our matches here, we got a shorter main events or shorter match card on SmackDown. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with how these matches turn out uh, and they're not being too crazy and silly. So one of the things that we'll look at is when we start the show. So let's look at how our matches are playing out. So we got our entrances on or off. I usually try to throw them as off, but we're going to select rival reactions for these two. Now the AI is going to go in and they're going to set up rival reactions automatically. You can go in and hit Y or triangle on the controller so that you can change the rival reactions yourself and you can be in free mode, which means you decide how you want to do this. The rival reactions have been updated. The cutscenes that were in like last year, they've actually refreshed a lot of those and there's a lot more than I even thought when it comes to rival reactions. And what I do like about universe mode to give it some props is that I like the layout now of this year. It looks a lot easier. It's cleaner to read, but there's just a lot of glitches still happening with universe mode where rivalries don't quite work uh, and people are not doing the right things. So we're going to add an action for AJ Styles, what he's going to do to LA Knight to get this thing going. So we can do an ambush. The thing that you got to know about with rival reactions and rivalries in general, number one, what rating did you put the feud at? So if you put these two in a rivalry, what is the level for their rivalry? Is it set at low, medium, high, or very high? Because depending on what you do, you can see on screen here, if you want to do a disrespect, you have to do it at a medium to high level. And that's how that is actually going to work. Some of them you can't do. So for example, I can't do this one because only available in lower rivalry intensity. So even if you have a high intensity rivalry, it doesn't just unlock all the levels. That's what I think it did in 2K23, where if you just said it's a very high, you just had access to everything. I don't think I like this this way because I'm selecting free mode. So technically in free mode, I should have free open access to all of the rivalry actions available. So if I want to do an unlikely manager, I should be able to do that and not change the intensity. So one thing I wish they would fix, but what I can do here, what's kind of fun is like if we do, um, let's say a distraction, uh, we can see who the match is going to be against. So ringside surprise distraction, but we've seen some of these cutscenes last year, mid match stage distraction. I don't like the mid matches. I want to see it like the beginning or the end. You got a money in the bank distraction, but we can't do that because they don't have the money in the bank briefcases. We can do special guest referee one, which is kind of fun. So let's try the special guest referee one. We'll change our special guest referee. And this is the one thing that I do really like about universe mode this year. You can swap out who is going to be involved in the matches. So it does make sense for who's on TV, bro. So if I want to have Who's going to be the special guest referee for this match? Kevin Owens is going into the US title match, so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, who could be a good guest referee? You know what? Grayson Waller is usually a piece of trash, so we'll have Grayson Waller going in there, and he's going to be the special guest referee. This one, I don't really care about this match, so we can skip that one. This one I'm going to be okay with. I do kind of want it to be not the OC going after them, the Street Profits but we don't have AOP, so we're not going to touch that. Then we have this rivalry as well. This one's leading up to WrestleMania. So once again, let's change this out, and we're going to give EO Sky something to do. She's going to do an ambush here, and they are at 50% uh, momentum. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. See, I don't have enough requirements here. Ambush during the entrance. I can do that, and that's about it. So we'll do that. And then you can change who's doing the ambushing. Increase EO Sky's aggressiveness. EO Sky and Bailey are set to face off in one on one match. And then, yes, she does it in the ring. Fantastic. So we'll do that and we'll check out some of the cutscenes too. All right, I like the Logan Paul one. Let's do this. So you got that rock in here for some reason. So Logan Paul is a piece of trash. So we're going to do an attack and let's see what we can do as part of our attack options. Attack during the entrance. We're already getting that on the show. We don't need to do another one. Post match attacks. Mutual aggression. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of want one where I'm going to got a brawl. No, I can't do the brawls. Can't do that. Can we do the distraction ones? Manager distractions. I don't really have a lot of options here. Teamwork. Can't do that. Sportsmanship. Can't do that. See, it depends on the level that you have this thing set at. It's going to do... It's going to let you do different things. Post-match cheap shot. Uh, referee knockout. Let's see. Our betrayals. No. Cash-ins. No. So you know what? Let's do a cheap shot because it's Logan Paul and we'll do a referee knockout 
And yeah, that'll work. And then we got our main event. And we'll do a rivalry action. So we gotta have these two going at it, which is ridiculous. They're gonna have a one-on-one -on -one match. Let's say that it's gonna be Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns is gonna get a little bit in here. And let's say... Mm, mm, brawl? Nope, nope, nope. See, for whatever reason... I can't do, like, anything. I can do, like, an ambush. But it won't even let me select the different categories, because it depends on what I have going on for the rivalry. Post-match torso injury, we've seen those. Stomping, attack during the entrance. They're not letting me do a whole lot. But what if it was Cody, Cody, Cody Rhodes? Oh, free mode is not on. Now we'll do free modes on. Now I can do it. Now I can get in there. And we'll do a champion's pre-match ambush here. That'll go over well. So it's a non-title match? Yeah. All right, then we'll take a look at some of these matches. Are you sure you want to leave the match card? I want to save all this. All right, let's get in here good there I'm gonna be I'm gonna let the AI run this thing let's see how this thing turns out we got AJ Styles LA Knight special guest referee Grayson Waller now, I think Grayson Waller he looks good as like a special guest referee it's it's not bad it's a good look for him he, he's got a future as a referee the one thing I like doing within universe mode this year is because we have the camera options and I'm spectating matches sometimes I just I do just look at him look at him, he's waving to the crowd he's, he's ignoring everything a terrible bad referee I do like having free roam camera. Uh, it does give me a lot of joy because I can actually watch these matches and set up camera angles like old Kevin Dunn used to do and just be frantic and just crazy with the whole thing and the cameras don't make any sense. What's he doing? So I do like that we have this option in here and then free roam the camera. And we can see how Grayson Wall is going to be. Also just being able to get in there and then just wreck one of the matches. So we'll run in here and we will actually be Grayson Waller because maybe we'll we'll wreck their little one-on-one -on -one match. Now I gotta probably screw over LA Knight because well, LA Knight's the good guy here. Grayson Waller is a tool, and AJ Styles is trying to be a nice big heel. Oh, take the pin. One, two, oh, they kicked out even if trying to do fast count. He still got out of it. And they're giving me an awful pin rating, too. Screw you. Oh, he's going for it again. Not calling for no rope break. One, two, three. Fast count. AJ Styles wins. Boom. <laughs> and then you get your ratings at the very end, obviously. What's good this year is how they've laid this out for the post-match stuff. So you do get the ratings to see how it's going to go. So again, if you have just the AI running the uh, rival reactions, this momentum is going to go up and down for the rivalries. You can see the relationship changes, too, which is good. So AJ Styles and Grayson Waller are now allies. AJ is getting desperate. And then the news feed is here at the end, which I do like because they just, uh, you always had to go and click it in the sub menus and I didn't care for that. So he just was desperate for the win here against his match against LA Knight. He found a way to have a stack match with a special guest referee. This referee definitely gave AJ Styles the upper hand in their match. LA Knight, yeah, he didn't stand a chance. Okay, to fast forward a bit, uh, we're going to take a look at the main event. All right, let's see the SmackDown match. And then we get the classic whoop -ha! We got Roman Reigns coming out there with the Undisputed Championship. They gotta fix side plates. We still don't have the Roman side plates. That's always a problem for people, too. Alright, then you got Roman Reigns out there. He's got his belt. Let's see if he picks up the title and he's actually gonna use it in this thing. What's fun, though, is I get to be Mr. Cameraman. And I get to watch this match. They got the count out happening. These two gotta get back in the ring. So, what I'll do now is I will just fast forward to Backlash. So we can see if our match table works. And then I'm gonna fast forward again to SummerSlam to see how that turned out. So tonight's show, we got our championships on the line. So let's see. We got the world title. Great. That rivalry is working. It's a no-holds-barred match. Ambulance match between Shinsuke and Dom, which would be kind of fun. Tag team title match, which worked. We got the women's title match, which is great. That's going to be a no-holds-barred. We also have another no-holds-barred match. AJ versus LA Knight. You got a one-on-one -on -one match. Logan Paul versus Randy Orton. The title match, Roman versus Cody. It's a no holds barred match. Another no holds barred match, Becky versus Rhea. And a final no holds barred match was going to be Gunta versus Sami Zayn. So, the problem I have here with this is that it's just everything is a no holds barred match. So, if I go into edit, let's go to our match table. Ah, uh, see, it went in there. So, we got a no holds barred match limited to one, but we came up with so many. So, if I turn this off for the championship, maybe then it won't really screw up as much. And we'll go to two tag team matches and a six-man tag is fine. So let's see if this does work or not. 
I'm gonna go back in and let's see if the show changes at all. Everything's gonna be just the same, which is a bit of a bummer. So let's go over to SummerSlam. Actually, let's go to Money in the Bank and let's see if our Money in the Bank works. Match tables do seem to still be a little glitch, which is unfortunate. It's part of my pet peeves is that you do stuff and then you set things up and people get substituted out or they just don't simply do the show properly the way you've kind of designed it. The one thing I will say is that when you are going to be doing your matches on the card, you want certain matches to happen. Make sure, and I could be wrong, but make sure that they are set up in the same divisions. If they're not set up in the same divisions, I find that it gets very wonky and people get substituted out and then your show doesn't make too much sense. So where I showed at the beginning that we went through and built out all of our divisions for our shows, everything stays fairly accurate and then you don't get weird substitutions. So it stays a little bit cleaner. So money in the bank right now, we got the tag team match, the icy title. We got the men's money in the bank ladder match, which actually looks fairly good. Hey, Cody's in the money in the bank. Good for Cody. You got another ladder match. This one is just for the United States Championship. Well, that's kind of cool. And that look at the heavy hitters you got in there. See, this is why I like being able to edit through all of the divisions properly because you, you, the, the ladder match you, makes sense who's in this thing. It's not crazy. Shin versus Shinsuke, or Shins, Shin versus Shinsuke. Shinsuke versus Seth for the world title because there's only two people in that division. We got another match. We got the rematch here. And then we got Roman versus Rock at Money in the Bank with the bloodline behind him. Oh, that's fantastic. And the main event is going to be the tag team match. So here's where they messed up. They didn't make it. They made it for a title match for two ladder matches. Now we only, I should say we didn't mess up. Never mind. Because I was going to say we don't have a women's uh, money in the bank. But I didn't set up a women's money in the bank. If you do a custom money in the bank, I find that it still glitches. So watch out for that. So I should correct myself. This is accurate because I have one money in the bank match set up on my card. I don't have the women's. So we could go in and fix that. But they did give us the second ladder match, which is going to be the men's. Now, I am curious, though, if I go in here, what I would have to do is let's just edit the show and let's do it for SmackDown. And let's edit the divisions. Or let's edit the championships and let's add a Money in the Bank briefcase. And we'll do that and we'll save it. And then let's go back to Money in the Bank and edit our shows. Excuse me, right on our calendar. And then we'll go to Edit and Match Table, Ladder Matches. Let's do three as our options. Let's see if it works. It may not work because we've already done Ladder Matches. So do, 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 the men's, the other one. No, it's too late. Now, if I did back out all the way, I wonder if it'll reset in time. So these are the only things you got to watch out for is that if you get to your show and you're not happy with it, then you got to you got to reset a little bit. Men's. No, nope, that card is locked in and ready to go. OK, well, no problem. So the other thing we can do is let's go to SummerSlam because I had that special guest referee match in there, too. Let's see how SummerSlam is going to shape out. And guys, if you add in more custom arenas and you add in more creative wrestlers, uh, in my experience, like last year, that really seems to slam universe mode and really really wreck it so let's see how the universe is setting up for SummerSlam show sammy versus gunther again so we got a long rivalry tag team title match looks great we got a fatal four-way ladder match well, that's kind of cool we got the tag team title match we got one-on-one we got kevin owens versus your boy la knight seth rollins and drew still going at it the bloodline versus the rock at SummerSlam, and there's your special guest referee match doesn't make any sense <laughs> so you got so we can edit the matches here. Caden Carter, it's not a chance. Then why? Alright, customized participants. Not a huge deal. But don't know why she's in it because she's not even part. She's in the tag team division. So let's do you know what? We're gonna make it slimy. Dum Dom is the referee. And we'll do that. Ah, Becky is the women's champion. Well, there you go. And we could add another match at the top, but we're okay there. And then if I want to go back for one second here, uh, let's look at our rivalries and how they look right now. Because I turned rivalry automatic rivalries off. It's still populating good matches because, again, if I go in there and set all this stuff up, it's going to make more sense. But they're still populating good matches based on the top contenders. 
and how I built out the divisions. So once again, they're not crazy. They're just going to keep kind of repeating into decent matches if you're not someone who wants to go in and meticulously run through rivalries all the time. We're just set it to automatic and see what comes of it. Now, if we look at the Royal Rumble, the Rumble is the interesting one because when I first started playing it, it was working where the Royal Rumble winners would go to WrestleMania. So we got to see if this works again because this is going to be kind of one of the big tests here. Okay, tonight's show is the Royal Rumble. These two are still going at it all year round. So we got the Women's Royal Rumble match. Tag team titles look great. Ooh, I like that we're going to get Bronson Reed versus Gunther. You got the Rock and Roman going at it for the undisputed title. And then you got the Men's Royal Rumble. Okay. So let's simulate all the matches. Okay, so there, there, there's your winner for the Men's Royal Rumble. <laughs> then we've got Shinsuke is the World Heavyweight Champion. Becky wins the Women's Royal Rumble match, which I thought was the main event. Uh, Bronson, oh no, Gunther wins that. Roman Reigns retains his title. So they swapped around the main events for stuff. I believe, maybe I got that wrong. Okay, so Becky and Creed. All right, let's see. Now let's go over and let's go to WrestleMania. Actually, let's go to Elimination Chamber because we were supposed to have two chamber matches and let's see if it actually simulates properly based off of what we got. Okay, Elimination Chamber. We got the chamber match, six men, but no title. Tag team match, one match, one one match, six person tag match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Okay, so the one worked. This should have been like for the main title. Oh, you know, but you know what it is? Technically, they should have done it with the Intercontinental Championship, but it's probably because the world division, the world title division, doesn't have six plus people. So that's my guess why that didn't work. So they just grabbed random people and put them in an Elimination Chamber match, which we could just set this up as a number one contenders, but it would have been good if they did the IC title. Well, that kind of makes sense too. Hang on, see you got Kevin Owens there. I got to delete Kevin Owens from that. All right. So let's see here. We'll simulate everything. Becky retains the title. Shinsuke is still our champion. Who won this thing? Xavier Woods. All right, good boy, Woods. Creed Brothers won the tag titles, but he's also going, Julius Creed's also going to WrestleMania, presumably. And The Rock won the title. So is it going to be one of the Creed Brothers and The Rock going to WrestleMania? This is stupid. All right, let's go and fast forward all the way to WrestleMania, guys, and let's see how our first year of it Kind of shaped up based off of the decisions we made. And if you guys enjoy your setup tutorials for Universe Mode, drop a like, hit a, hit a subscribe button, all that good stuff. Notify bell. There's tons of content here on the channel for you. Anything you want to do with 2K and WWE. Let's look at WrestleMania. Ah, yeah, Julius Creed's on the cover. That's that's good news. All right. WrestleMania. Dom versus Sammy. Pretty cool. Tag team match. No tag titles. We got Tegan Ox, Ivy Nile. No holds barred. We got a casket match of Jay versus JD McDonough. Oh no. Special guest referee, Ricochet and Gunther. Okay. You got you got, you got Eric in there. That's fine. You got one match that makes sense. Roman versus Rock for the belt. That worked out. Rhea versus Becky. That's great, but Becky won the Royal Rumble, so she's already champion, so fine. Oh, and then you got Julius Creed for A versus Shinsuke. Oh yeah, because Julius Creed's on Raw, so he wasn't going to face The Rock. Okay, so that worked out. So we actually did get what we wanted, pretty much. Well, that's not bad. Do you know what we're going to do? We're going to announce a cash-in. Oh, Cody Rhodes is the Mr. Money in the Bank. Oh no. Well, hang on here. Is he going to cash in on the world title? Oh, hang on here, guys. Now I'm now I'm curious. Let's, let's go in to uh, edit our shows. Because we got the Money in the Bank championships. Mr. Money in the Bank is in here, but what belt is he going after? Oh, he can only go after because he's assigned to that brand. Dang it. Okay, Cody, you're going to go after that. You're going to cash in. You're going to cash in. All right, let's start the show. So let's simulate this thing. Dom wins. No tag titles. Don't know why those tag titles aren't on the line, but okay, fine. Got an old Bard here. These two must have been heating up all year round. Remember, we don't have the rivalries on, so this thing's doing whatever it wants. But we got the casket match in there that we wanted. We got the special referee badge. We ordered that. It was terrible booking by Triple H. Okay, now we got uh, Roman Rock. All right, we're going to simulate this. Who wins? Random. Roman Reigns won. All right, Roman Reigns got his belt back off the Rock. Then we're going to simulate this thing. Oh, Becky wins. All right. And then Creed, the biggest match of all time. Let's see, free mode. It's like Bree mode. We'll do free mode. Loser leaves town. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, we'll do a level three. Loser leaves town level three. Done. Now we can do it. Turn on the entrances. I want to see if I can 
cash in. That's the point of this. I don't want to see this match. Oh, it's inside Hell in a Cell. I cannot cash in. There is no cash in for here, ladies and gentlemen. We're just going to have to deal with the Creed Brothers. No. I don't want to. Rivalry outcomes. Yeah, so the good thing, too, is when you pause the menu, you can go in and see Loser Leaves Town. So if you forget what the rivalry actions are, you can always check in here. But we got this idiotic tag team match. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw on a second controller, and we're going to we're gonna lose for our Creed brother. And Shitsuke is going for the pin, and we're going to force this match to end. And Creed, you are going out of town, brother. So Shinsuke retains his World Heavyweight Championship. Let's see what happens, if anything. Probably nothing. Eh, look at shit. The very dapper man. And that's the end of that. I don't think we get the cutscene either because it was a title match in Hell in a Cell, which I think overrides how this thing works out for all of us. So Shinsuke, congratulations, buddy. It was a bad match. It was a bad WrestleMania. And it was a bad way to end this whole thing. Ladies and gentlemen, that is how Matt goes about setting up for 2024 Universe Mode. Match it up like WWE TV and test out some of the rivalry actions with you. I hope this helped you along the way. And if you guys want more Universe Mode tutorial videos, let me know. Tell me what you want to see. Do you want to see me go through and do an Attitude Era one? Do you want a Ruthless Aggression Era setup in Universe? We can do some retro stuff. Let me know what you guys feel like. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.